Sanvi again, and today I'm going to be talking about the frontal lobe. Today, I will cover the overview of the frontal lobe, the functions of the frontal lobe, and the disorders or diseases that occur in the frontal lobe. First, I'm going to co uh, cover the overview of the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is the biggest lobe in the brain. Due to its large size, it has many different functions. As conveyed by its name, the frontal lobe is at the utmost front of the brain. The brain has four main functionally distinct areas, the primary motor cortex, the medial areas, the orbital areas, and the lateral areas. They all control different functions in the frontal lobe. Fun fact, did you know that the frontal lobe doesn't develop fully until 25? And there have been some cases where the frontal lobe didn't develop until 30. Isn't that, that's why the frontal lobe is one of the last parts of the brain to mature. Second, I'm going to explain the functions of the frontal lobe. First up, we have the primary motor cortex. The primary motor cortex controls and plans and executes the voluntary muscles. Voluntary muscles are muscles you can choose to start and stop. An example of this is your hand. You can move it up and down at your own will. The heart isn't a voluntary muscle because it cannot be controlled by you. You can't start it or stop it at your own will. Everyday tasks such as tying a shoelace or walking out the front door are controlled by the primary motor cortex. Furthermore, the rest of the functions are the lateral, medial, and orbital areas. These include the medial frontal area, the frontal orbital area, the inferolateral area, and the dorsolateral area. The medial frontal area is responsible for awareness and motivation. The frontal orbital area helps shape social behavior. The inferolateral area is responsible for linguistic functions, while the dorsal area manages freshly acquired information. Therefore, it is functionally called working memory. As you can see, that there are many more, but this will just confuse you further, so I just briefed on the important ones. Last but not least, the different disorders or diseases that occur in the frontal lobe. The first on our list is paralysis. Paralysis is the complete loss of movement. Monoplegia is one of the is the loss of movement in one arm or leg. Hemiplegia is the loss of movement in one arm and one leg on the same side of the body. Paralepsia is the loss of movement in both legs, and quadrilepsia is the loss of movement in both arm and leg. Another is aphasia, which is which is trouble, having trouble with speech or language. The three types of aphasia is Broca's, Wernicke's, and global. Broca's aphasia prevents a person from forming intelligible words or sentences, but has little or no effect on the ability to understand others when they speak. People with Wernicke's aphasia can't understand others or even themselves when they speak. People with global aphasia cannot provide understandable words or understand each other. They communicate with written language. Thank you for listening. I hope you understand the frontal lobe better now.